You, a 41-year-old man, David Davids. You are writing a book called Bucket Detective. Book is not good. Truthfully, you not care about write book. You not even like read books because reading gives headache from make think too hard. You are married to wife who is abusive. By abusive, you mean she not do perverted sex whenever demanded. To get perverted sex, you approach girls in the street, but they not give it, and instead call you creep and pig. This is why you is writing Bucket Detective. Famous book make it impossible for girls to resist sex, especially glasses girls at nearby community college. At dinner with friend of yours who have recent success in business, you say, writing book is hard. Is there not an easy way to write great book? Friend of yours smile with mischief and says, yes, yes there is. He hand you card with address and say, go here and do what ask of you. In exchange, you will get what is desired. And if you not like, you leave any time. You not think more than one second to decide this is plain because it's much simpler to create good words on empty page. So, one cold and rainy morning, you arrive at address and enter front door. Sleepless. I'm a 23-year-old white male, and I'm the building's maintenance man, cook, and I also clean the toilets. I thought it would be nice if once the Dark Lord is reborn to bring in 10,000 years of terror, if people could visit the place where it all began, kind of like a museum to the origin of their torment. So I've installed these boxes, which I call Gwen boxes, all over the building to explain the significance of different areas. Obviously, since the Dark Lord Mishriel, the Seven-Tongued Slayer of Kings, the Roaster of the Innocent, the Defiler of the Damned has yet to rise, these Gwen boxes are kind of a work in progress.
These are the offices of the two fathers, Dr. Z.W. Francis and Jedediah Holcomb, who were the founders and leaders of our happy little... <laughs> I almost said cult, but it's a religion. There is a difference. The fathers believed that they were in fact one being that had been divided into two bodies for fear that if one being had so much knowledge, power, and sexual charisma, the universe would be torn into shreds. So to keep that great power separated, the fathers worked without ever meeting face to face or speaking aloud to one another. Instead, they communicated by passing letters through the mail slot between their offices. It was in this way that they laid down the laws of Mishriel, the god among gods, the gimp in the graveyard, the pus of Xanadu. Dr. Z.W. Francis, known as The Scholar, was a mathematician, physicist, biologist, inventor, painter, and most importantly, a medical doctor specializing in the female reproductive system. He was the first physician to do a deep, deep, deep study of the female body, from a medical perspective, of course. And had the fools in the medical establishment not misinterpreted his work and taken away his license to practice medicine, the writings and tools he developed would be the cornerstone of modern gynecology. Jedediah Holcomb, known as the Mystic, was a hypnotist, psychologist, poet, meditation guru, and expert on world religions. His most significant work was the unification of all major religious texts to place the Dark Lord himself at the center. Yes, everyone from Jesus Christ to the Buddha were in fact pawns of Mishriel, the breather of bile, the decapitator of slaves, the withholder of orgasms.
On February 18th, the fathers delivered their seed to the holy female vessel and then died of simultaneous heart attacks. Their bodies were cremated and their ashes preserved in urns while their souls were released into the building so that upon the Dark Lord's rebirth, they would be one with Mishriel, the putrid prince, the horn of Babel, the apple among the corn. then sat in the chairs on this stage and telepathically delivered the precise steps required to complete the waltz. Those who completed the waltz were to be blessed with the gifts of the Dark Lord, while those who could not were locked away to die.
I'm sorry, my child. Though your devotion has been great, you have shown yourself to be a fake. Deliver yourself to the cage at the far end of the room, but do not despair. Your death will be slow and painful, and your loved ones will soon forget you. I'm sorry, my child. Though your devotion has been great, you have shown yourself to be a fake. Deliver yourself to the... I'm sorry, my child. Though your devotion has been great, you have shown yourself to be a fake. Deliver yourself to the cage at the far end of the room, but do not despair. Your death will be slow and painful, and your loved ones will soon forget you. After a few minutes in cage, you realize, oh dang, this door never going open, and you regret taking orders from voice in the sky. You find pen and paper and write final words, which is, I am dying here, but wish I wasn't. After that, you simply stare into space and think thoughts which is so insignificant, they're not even worth mentioning. You make no important realizations about your life and is not even savoring last moments alive. After several hours of staring into space, you change final words to say, actually, it okay to die, because I'm getting pretty bored. Six days later, you get so thirsty, you go to sleep and don't wake up, and then you is dead.
I'm sorry, my child. Though your devotion has been great, you have shown yourself to be a fake. Deliver yourself to the cage at the far end of the room, but do not despair. Your death will be slow and painful, and your loved ones will soon forget you. I'm sorry, my child. Though your devotion has been great, you have shown yourself to be a fake. Deliver yourself to the cage at the far end of the room, but do not despair. Your death will be slow and painful, and your loved ones will soon forget you. I wasn't sure if I'd do this, but I thought visitors might want to know more about me, their humble guide, Gwen Sleeveless. So let's see. My parents died when I was two, I was sexually abused by the man who ran my orphanage, and I used to burn my face with cigarettes to get attention. Pretty standard stuff. I was 14 when I ran away, and 18 when the fathers took me in and gave me this bed, which they graciously placed under a leaky pipe to strengthen my mental strength, which they said I had none of. When I'm not cleaning toilets, I write songs about the fathers, I draw pictures of the fathers, and I pray to the fathers. As you can tell, I'm a pretty lucky guy.
Ashriel, the father of the motherless, the leper among the clean, the jester of Gallipoli, so that he, the Dark Lord, would be reborn. The Gospel of John is interpreted by Jedediah Holcomb. Baby in hand, you stumble into street and pass to unconscious. You wake up in hospital with caring wife at side, and her smile make you feel annoyed. Hospital people heal you and give you wooden finger, arm, and legs, and return you home. Wife is so desperate for love, she not ask where baby come from, but keep it and raise it his own. At first, you think baby cute, but now it only eat and scream and poop, and you regret and take with you. A friend of yours that tell you about the house is much angry. Say, you ruined everything. You say that followers of Mishril is broken up, and few that remain now selling t-shirts at mall. Your life not much good either. Basically just watch TV game shows and touch fiddlestick with wife out buying groceries. You consider to divorce wife, but then you must buy own groceries, which seem like major hassle. Baby grow up handsome and with much charisma, but with eyes of unfathomable darkness. By age of 17, Baby have many devout followers, which start you worried because after Save Baby, you're not much nice to it. For example, sometimes you forget Baby's name, which is considered impolite for Dad due to child. 